Greetings, Dr. Mark Winton here from the Department of Criminal Justice at the University of Central Florida. And in, in this short video, I'd like to briefly discuss an article by Dr. Jay Kaplan published in 2007 titled, The Fifth Wave, The New Tribalism. And this was published in Terrorism and Political Violence, volume 19, pages 554 to 570. This um, article relates to previous uh, research on waves of, of terrorism. And what I found fascinating in this article is that Kaplan uses his model to analyze the Khmer Rouge and the Lord's Resistance Army. So basically what he's doing is using wave theory from the terrorism research and applying it to um, uh, the Cambodian case as well, uh, which was a genocide, as well as the Lord's Resistance Army, which is considered uh, a terrorist group. And I'm going to focus on uh, the um, uh, Cambodian case. And um, the article, of course, compares and contrasts both, but I think this begins to give us some insight into uh, developing and applying models. This, this to me is extremely innovative research. So, um, and, and again, you know, think about the time frame when it was published, what's happened since, and um, I, I'm hopefully going to see more research using this model. So he, he concludes that the Khmer Rouge was um, at the beginning of the fifth wave, and that fifth wave is a genocidal one. So what happens here is that we begin to take a closer look at what can occur when we start comparing uh, terrorism and genocide. And that's been something that I have found um, quite complex in my teaching and research, not only terrorism and genocide, but also serial murder. Uh, you know, I'm teaching those courses throughout the year, and um, you know, then trying to put it all together. And almost, you know, here's the terrorist, terrorism experts over here, and the genocide experts over here, and the serial killer experts over there. And, and here I am trying to make sense of all this, wondering is there any type of models that uh, we can use, and how do these cases um, within and uh, comparing, uh, you know, between, you know, differ. So the Khmer People's Revolutionary Party, also referred to the Khmer Rouge, um, the uh, Kampuchean Communist Party, is one of our cases, as, as you know, and um, it's in our textbook. There's a very um, uh, helpful uh, chapter outlining all the features of the genocide that uh, are relevant for this course. And we know that that Communist Party in Cambodia became radicalized under the leadership of Pol Pot. And um, so let's go ahead and look at some of those fifth wave characteristics that Pol Pot brought into his genocidal group. Okay, there's a focus on an idealistic future and a new world. So we see that. Uh, starting over, starting um, again. Um, there's withdrawal from society, uh, in their case, into the wilderness areas, and that also uh, led to the physical and psychological isolation from uh, the rest of the world. And there is the establishment of a new calendar starting at the year zero, thus um, beginning the new world. Um, Pol Pot and his group divided people into base people and into new people in order to carry out the genocide, in order to differentiate in-group from out-group. So in essence, he tried to create a utopian society, creating new men and new women. Children were socialized, and this included forced marriages and having groups raise children to be um, socialized into the group ideology. 
Rape was used as a tactic, and torture and killing became a way of life for the group. They were looking for racial purity, following their authoritarian and charismatic leader Pol Pot. Pol Pot also distorted religion to justify the killings. So if we, you know, are to kind of summarize uh, first, um, I think, and remember this article came out in, in 2007, um, so that was quite a while ago. And I think that Dr. Kaplan predicted current situations um, back in 2007 and, and prior. But to kind of summarize the characteristics of the fifth wave, and we'll want to look at that with other groups, if, if those characteristics are occurring, the uh, radical break from the previous models, with, withdrawal from society, a new calendar, purity, internal violence, genocidal violence, new race, socialization of children to the new model, rape, local focus, authoritarianism with a uh, charismatic leader, and um, this religious apocalyptic violence, if you will. So I believe that this model demonstrates how we might integrate terrorism and genocide studies. We're um, focusing here on looking at theories, research methodologies, and policies. And within this realm of research, we're analyzing themes, patterns, and clusters but at the same time looking at outliers or or cases that do not fit. And um, we need to keep asking ourselves what's missing and linking the studies uh, together. And so I just briefly wanted to go over that model um, as it relates to um, the Cambodian genocide. And um, again, it may be a useful, very useful model to use in a variety of studies. Thank you.